Welcome to session three. In this session, we will cover references and guards. References are a way for you to remember matches in your template rules. You've already seen type references, and type references have the same name as a type and will match things from that type. For example, we've seen likes and love from the previous session. In this example, likes matches the type likes and likes used again in the answer recalls that match. So likes is a type reference. It's called a type reference because it has the same name as a type. Ordinary references begin with a dollar sign but they will always match. So in this example, like dollar x will match any word after like. In the same way, if you use $x in your answer, it will be recalled. So $x is called an ordinary reference because there is no type directly associated with it. Okay, let's just run through an example. So let's say we have Q where you match a dollar sign $x and again you just recall this. If you ask the bot, do you like oil? $x will be oil and so it will say, yes, I like oil. If we say you like water, it will say, yes, I like water. Love metal, of course, will not work because like and love don't match. And so this template doesn't fire. So this is an IDK situation. Now, you can have two different kinds of references like this, dollar sign $x and $y. In fact, you can call them anything that you like. So, do you like oil will not match because you need to match both X and Y. If you say you like water and oil, the answer would be love, oil and water because we have reversed the order. Now, how about like X and X? Now, these are both the same reference. They will only match sentences in which you have the same word at those places. So, if you said you like water and water, the response would be love water. But if you said you like water and oil, because water and oil are not the same thing, it will be an IDK. Conjunctions are a way for you to limit your reference matches. So let's say we have got two types in this case, animal and food. And you can see here for animal, we have bird, turkey, pig and horse as our things. And for food, we have pretzel, cheese and turkey. Now, what if we want to limit the reference match so that it matches just the animal? Well, the trick is to use the conjunction. Now, if you've been following our videos, you know that this is equivalent just to dollar sign animal, which just matches the animal. But another way of doing it with ordinary references and types is to do it this way with a conjunction. Now, notice that instead of using dollar sign animal, you use at sign animal. So the at sign is a constraint that puts a limit to what can be matched by the dollar x. So the dollar x still receives and matches any word, but the at animal symbol will constrain that so it only matches things which are animals. Okay, let's see this in action. So do you like oil? Well, it's IDK because all is not an animal. Do you like bird? Yes, I like bird is the response because bird is an animal. Do you like cheese, which is a food and not an animal? It's again IDK. Now, what if I put another conjunction for food? Well, in this case, this will only match words which are both animals and food and the only thing which matches is turkey. So do you like bird is IDK. Do you like turkey? Yes, I like turkey. Do you like cheese? Again, an IDK. Okay, so remember, the dot is a conjunction, meaning everything has to match. One pro tip is for you to put your specific templates above the more general ones. Otherwise, the general ones will always fire and prevent the specific templates from firing. Let me give you an example. So in this listing, I have got 
two templates, one which is more specific because it will only match drinks. The second template uses an ordinary reference and therefore will match anything, not just a drink. So again, specific templates must be above a general template. Now, what if your user asks a question like, do you like coffee or water? How would you handle that? Well, here I've amended it so that you want to check if the first is a drink or perhaps the drink is said in the second position. So we use a dollar sign with a dash to mean a reference that is not matched or not used because if the drink occurs in the first position, coffee or water, then I want to discard water but I still want to match water itself so that it doesn't match do you like water or nothing at all. Let's look at the question, do you like coffee or water? Because coffee is a drink, it matches the first position and the dollar sign underscore or the discard match will match water. That's correct. So this will have a response, I prefer coffee. Now, if you had instead asked, do you like water or coffee? Then the discard is in the first position and coffee is in the second and dollar sign X will match coffee and so again the response is I prefer coffee. What if the user asks do you like coffee or tea? Now in this case both are drinks. So what you can do is to put a new template and this template is extremely specific. It requires that both the first and second positions are both drinks. You need to make sure that the references you use are different. Now what if the question is prefer instead of like and to instead of or. How would you handle that? So the best way is to create a new type called like. So we can match words like like, prefer, love, crazy about, etc. Now we've done that already in previous sessions. The next thing we can do is to use an alternative. So in this case you see or slash to. Now you've also seen this in action in the previous session. But this is for literal or, or literal to. Don't go overboard creating new types because they clutter your microtopic. Use only when necessary. Guards are a way for you to select between multiple answers in the same template. If you look at this example, you've got two answers, not just one. In the first answer, there is a guard. And the guard is essentially a check to see if that answer should be used or not. In this case, is that the reference must be the same as bubble tea. And then the response will be, I love bubble tea. Otherwise, it's a more generic response. Yes, I like coffee or yes, I like cocoa, where X is always a drink because it's already been matched in the rule. Let's work through a few examples. Do you like oil? Well, oil is not a drink, and so this is IDK. Do you like coffee? Well, coffee is a drink, so it will match the rule. Which to select, the first answer or the second? Well, it's obvious that coffee is not the same as bubble tea, so the second answer is selected. Now, if you say, do you like bubble tea? That fires the first answer and the response is I love bubble tea. What if the question was misspelled? Let's say bubble tea was misspelled. How would that work? Well, one thing you can do is to put an alternative into the type itself. So these are called synonyms and you can attach as many synonyms as you want for anything the name of the thing will be the first synonym that's been defined. So in this case, the first one is the correct spelling for bubble tea. So that's being used in your rules. So again, in synonyms, bubble tea and the incorrect version are both mapped into bubble underscore tea, which is what you can use in your rules for matching in guards. All right, having said that, 
you should use synonyms for alternative words for the same thing. So if you have different words or different phrases to mean the exact same thing, like LKY and Lee Kuan Yew both refer to the same person. So that's where you use synonyms. Avoid using synonyms for misspellings like I have for bubble tea, for example, unless they are really common. And you can tell if they're common or not by logging the response from your users uh, and analyzing the logs. In all the other cases for misspellings, you should let the bot just fail with an IDK. I'd recommend that you watch this video at least once more because I've covered quite a number of things and once you're done, go into the lab instructions and work through session three and complete the exercise. If you have questions, you can ask them on the forum group. Good luck.